This video is how to take off the transfer box. In other words, the box which goes between the normal gearbox and the four wheel drive. So it gives you the chance to shift from two wheel drive into four wheel drive and vice versa with the use of a gear stick. On later models, there was a vacuum powered system which had a button in the cab. On this one, you've simply got what looks like a second gear lever. Um, this is an S Reg British registration, which I think from memory is 1999, but you could check that up. And um, the transfer box on this vehicle, um, it just simply stuck in neutral and we couldn't get it into high or low gear. And it does appear that there was very little or no oil in there. So it's not a terribly easy job, I have to say. And most people say remove the engine or remove the gearbox, but we've just about done it. And uh, here you would normally see the second gear shift, which goes from high to low ratio beside the main gear shift. This one's as smooth as you like. It's perfect. But the other one was absolutely stuck fast in neutral, wouldn't go anywhere. So we gave it some gentle taps, but we weren't going to try to do more than that in case we cause further damage. Now, there's carpet fitted all around here and there's no way to lift it up easily. So what we did was just cut it at 45 degrees in each corner here four cuts and then cut it across the middle and peeled it back and tucked it under itself so that allowed us to get to the i think there were six bolts which go in a ring roughly around the rubber which is designed to prevent water from coming into the car um, and it also exposed the top of the four wheel to two wheel drive lever which is this one which would sit pretty much straight down there now it's got four bolts on it from the aperture that exists in the vehicle you can undo the inner two quite easily but the two which are nearer to me you can't undo easily there's almost no way to get a tool in there so what we did was we we drilled two holes and we used an enlargement tool to drill the holes a bit bigger um, a plate drilling tool so those are about one inch diameter and we can easily patch them with a little weld later if we want to. But it allowed a socket to go down there. And of course the socket can then undo those two bolts and pull out this shift lever easily. So if I carry you down to the bottom of the car, down the pit, and uh, sorry, I don't want to edit it, this video and spend a lot of time on the computer. So I'll try to do this all in one take. So forgive any mistakes and echoes. So you can see here what appears to be, I'm no expert in Daihatsu's, but this appears to be some sort of spacer. Now this spacer goes from the gearbox, which is on my left. I'll just show you quickly. There's the gearbox itself. There's the, the cooling fins on the bottom of the gearbox going up to the bell house, which contains the clutch. So going back along the gearbox again, and there's the drain plug for the gearbox. This appears to be a spacer and the spacer is potentially just to move the transfer box, which is this part, further back. I don't know that for a fact. We'll soon see. Now, this here, um, this assembly has four bolts, which bolt onto the um, front drive bar, which goes to the front differential. As you can see, the holes in there and four bolts. And on the other side of it, we have four, the same assembly in essence, which has four bolts, which goes to the rear drive bar. And uh, we don't know the best place to split this, this transfer box, which is this bit between my fingers, if we should split it on this seam or to split off this spacer, what looks like a spacer, at the same time. But actually we've taken out all the bolts, we've hit it pretty darn hard and it doesn't want to come off. And now... Um, you know, we've been hitting it harder and harder and being careful, using a piece of wood between the lump hammer and the metal so we don't actually make contact with between the hammer and metal and damage it or crack it. Um, and you can see here there's the trace of one bolt which went through from this side, the bolt head being here, straight through that spacer and into a thread there. And there was another one which went there in parallel. Those are the only two very long bolts. Now those tend to seize up. This is a common problem. And this one did seize. And this one we haven't managed to release yet. We've heated it up repeatedly with a blowtorch, heated the 
metal housing here and it's still not loose so we're going to heat it up again and knock it out but what i concentrated on first was this one this one wouldn't come out i cut it in half with a grinder and cut a little space out so that we have space to bend it down and maneuver and i bent this bolt down if you imagine it being bent towards the length of my finger along my finger which meant i could get a tube on it a hefty tube on the outside and so i had a very big leverage and i was able to wiggle it backwards and forwards and it actually came loose pretty quickly after it had been heated so that now is nearly unscrewed i'll unscrew that with a pair of mole grips which will leave us to that side but once this on the left is out we can get a hammer and a drift onto here and i think it will come out fairly easily especially if we heat it you can see that during this process of heating um, a gap did open up a very small gap here and oil started just bubbling out and yet here it opened up more we got about two millimeters gap there and i put a bolt in replaced one bolt just for safety there into that thread so it doesn't fall down on my head or someone else's um, i don't need any more sense knocked into me there's little there already and um so I'll just take you on to a tour quickly of the other side of the transfer box so you know what it looks like. So the gearbox is coming along towards us here and we meet the trans then the spacer is approximately where my fingers are, the adapter, whatever it is. And then we've got the transfer box here and this is the rear drive shaft where it bolts on and you can see it hanging loose here and just tied up out of the way. That would normally be bolted there with the four bolts and you can see up along the transfer box into the cab at the top and the gear stick would sit just where my fingers are my fingers are now dipping down into where the four and two wheel drive gear stick shift would normally sit um, and normally i have this packed with a rag so more dirt won't fall in there and what we've got here is a, a loop of um, strap, a cam, cam strap. You can use any old thing uh, across that piece of wood up in the cab just to stop this from falling on my head if it does come loose and to stop it tumbling towards me or tumbling the other way. You know, it's all uncertain for us. This is new territory. So um, I hope this video helps other users. Uh, if there are further complications, I will let you know. But I think it's really as simple as this. And I'm a complete beginner with four wheel drive vehicles and with four tracks especially. Um, but I couldn't find any other videos on YouTube showing this part or how to get it off. We were worried in case there was a circlip or something that had to be removed in here in case, uh, sorry, before this could be removed. But it certainly doesn't appear so. And it was difficult actually to find that information. So nothing needs to be touched on this side as far as I can see. I'll update you if there's any other info. Thank you. So this part of the video is taken literally five minutes after the first part. And yep, there's nothing else holding this uh, transfer box onto the gearbox. It is literally this rim of bolts and nothing else. So you don't have to worry about any circlips or anything inside it. Uh, once you've split this, which is, you know, not easy, it, it's held on pretty firmly after being there for many years. But um, once it comes down, it all becomes evident what's in there. This is the, the drive which goes from the gearbox into this, the transfer case. And if I turn you around the other way, you'll see the opposite. This is the rear drive shaft. So we're looking from the back of the vehicle up now over the transfer box which is sitting on the wood and into the towards the front of the vehicle and that is the plate this has been unbolted from and you can see the drive cog at the top so this transfer case simply goes up there and yeah a reciprocal part just slides over that or into that cog actually that's an external Piece. I'm trying to get you a good shot there. You can just about see the splines going inwards. Um, now the only thing we had to connect from the transfer box before lowering it was three electrical connectors. You can see them just bunched up there now. And one pipe and it's a small 
black plastic pipe. You can see it dangling down there. And all that pipe is, is a breather. It goes towards the T-piece, which goes into the gearbox. And then it goes on under the main body of the car, up under the bonnet, and it's doubled upwards and then downwards to stop siphonage and um, to stop any dirt from going into the gearbox. Very nice, simple system, actually. Well, well made, well thought out. And you can see that the gear stick for the main gearbox is still in place. It, it's in a sort of overhang, which overhangs the top of the transfer box when it's in place. Um, so yeah, simple as that. Undo the breather pipe, the electrics, and uh, a ring of bolts, and down she comes. So let's have a look at this uh, spacer piece, or what I think is a spacer. Um, yep, there she is. You can see there that's... Uh, oh, get my fingers on there, it's not easy. So where my finger is, that's the other joint there. That's the joint onto the main, from my finger onwards to the back of the vehicle is the transfer box itself. And this part is some form of spacer between the gearbox and the transfer box. And then you can see this is looking to the back of the vehicle from the front. And you can see there the external splines which meet with the gearbox. And uh, yeah, they don't look in good condition at all, actually. They really, that oh, looks pretty damaged from the little I know about these things. So uh, I think we're going to strip this down and try and find what's wrong inside it. Now, what I've ascertained from speaking to various mechanics, no one gave me a very straight and succinct answer on how to do this and what to expect. But the rough consensus of opinion is that uh, the parts for this are going to be expensive for the transfer box. So if something simple has come out of place and you can easily find it and easily fix it, uh, apparently the two most common causes are uh, one of the main bearings going wrong which may be that bearing, I'm not sure yet. Uh, and it could be what they call the big bolt um, coming undone. Now, I presume there's a bolt on the other end of this. I don't know yet. Um, apart from that, um, the cost, uh, unless it's something very simple that we can easily, you know, refit and get it back together easily, uh, the cost of a second-hand gearbox in England, as in 2023, is around... You can get them for £130 if you're lucky, 200 if you're not so lucky, for the transfer box, that is. Um, so at that price, you know, £130, if you could get them for that, it's probably not worth trying to disassem disassemble this box at all, as long as you're sure that the new replacement one, second-hand replacement one, is actually working. And I must point out that there are two types of transfer box. This is the older type, which is just driven using the gear stick, I might have mentioned already, but the more modern type um, involves a switch, an electrical switch in the cab, which uses vacuum pressure from the engine to shift from high to low and vice versa. So you do have to make sure you get a manual box, a manual transfer box, if you look for the replacement. Uh, I think that pretty much covers it. The other thing that we disconnected here was the that's either the rev counter, it's got to be the speedo, hasn't it? Speedo cable there. Um, so it's actually a very simple job, although it's a heavy job. It's not easy. And you can see one piece of stud remaining that I've got to take out. That's the, the bolt, the head end. So there shouldn't be any thread in it, uh, but it's really stubborn. So I thought I'd take this off and then worry about it afterwards. Otherwise, it's, it is fairly straightforward. Yeah, sorry, one thing that I should add is that there's, um, you can see a cross member going across the vehicle here from one side right to the other. And there's another one which bolts, would bolt, be bolted on here from this plate across under the transfer box almost to the other side. Now we unbolted that to give us space to dismount the transfer box. It's only four bolts on each one. The nuts are welded on, so it's quite easy to undo the bolts. And we didn't have any problem at all with that. What I should, what, what I wanted to say about that was as soon as it was unbolted, there was this great creaking sound. And I don't know if you can see it. You probably can't from the, no, you can't with in this camera. Sorry. But one side, this, this side is now almost an inch, certainly two centimeters, probably an inch higher than that side. Now, this is a very rusty frame. 
it could be because the frame's very rusty and it's worn out and the car's trying to collapse uh, <laughs> it's pretty bad um, but it also could be stress has formed over the years or even stress has formed from welding when people have done the numerous repairs on it how we're going to get that back on if we do i don't know but i thought i would point that out um you know for safety's sake make sure that the different sides of the vehicle are chopped up if you're worried about it um and be careful that you know things are going to suddenly move don't get your fingers trapped in there and apparently it came down with a it wasn't me who did it it was my friend um it came down with a great creak and a groan and then the whole you could see the the car shifting about so as i mentioned when i was under the vehicle i wasn't exactly sure where to split the transfer box off uh, it could have been at this point here just taking the main transfer box off this way um, or it could have been taking off this what looked like an adapter to get the uh, transfer box further back i don't think it is to get it further back it's just to make space for the end of the gearbox and there were some gears in here as you you would have seen from previous images um, however it's obvious well it looks to me that there's no way this part is going to come out without a, a bearing puller and without a, some investigation and some um, special tools so the correct place to or the easy place to split the uh, split the box is here so obviously leaving this adapt what i call an adapter unit on so now you know where to split the box and this is this is the front side this is the front of the vehicle going this way and this is to the front uh, front differential, front axle.